This is Roger's Science of Unitary Human Beings by Kate, Naomi, Kaylee, Sean, and Aaron. Martha Rogers was born in Dallas, Texas in 1914. She pursued her education all the way to a Doctor of Science at John Hopkins in 1954. She worked as a public health nurse, a nurse supervisor, and a professor. Some major concepts of the theory are that humans are integral with the universe, patients should be viewed as a whole and are one with their environment, nurses should focus on the manifestations that emerge from the connection between the human and their environment, nurses can better understand their patients and the human experience by identifying these wave patterns, nursing is both science and art, and the purpose of nursing is to promote health and well-being for all persons, wherever they are. There are eight key concepts outlined by Rogers in her theory, the first of which is the energy field, which is the fundamental unit for both the living and non-living, and allows us to view humans and their environment as wholes. The fields can vary in intensity, density, and extent. The second is openness, which is the lack of boundaries that it can stop the energy flow from the human and environmental fields. This enables a constant energy flow between the two. The third is pattern, which is a single wave that distinguishes the energy field and gives it its, its identity. Each, en each energy field has a pattern. The fourth is pan-dimensionality, which is a non-linear domain that lacks in spatial or temporal characteristics. Homeodynamic principles are postulates, postulate the way of perceiving unitary human beings. There are three aspects to this. The first of which is resonance, which is the ordered rhythm that characterizes the human and environmental fields. The human and, and environmental fields can undergo continuous transformation. Helicy is the nonlinear, unpredictable nature of energy fields. And integrality is the shared, constant relationship that exists between the human and the environmental fields. Both fields are unique, but they also are always connected. This diagram portrays the lack of boundaries that exist between the environmental energy field and the human energy field in Rogers as unitary human beings. There is a constant exchange of energy, and the fields share a constant connection, but are also unique energy fields. Rogers believes the nursing process is a three-step process which includes assessment, voluntary mutual patterning of both the human and the environmental fields, and evaluation. First step is assessment, which includes assessing the individual and their environmental fields. This includes the pattern of events at any given point in space-time and the simultaneous states of the patient and their environment. The next step is voluntary mutual patterning of both the human and the environmental fields. This includes offering the patient choices and, and empowering the patient, educating the patient and sharing knowledge with them, fostering patterning, and patient self-reflection. The last step is evaluation, and this determines if the goals are met. Next, we have the theory in relation to nursing metaparadigm concepts. In relation to nursing, a good nursing practice will constantly maintain an energy field that is conducive to the patient. The purpose is to promote health and well-being of all persons, and nursing is compassionate concern for human beings. In relation to health, it is an expression of the life process. It is determined by the interaction between energy fields. It relates to a person's value system and it's a reflection of whether or not man is achieving his or her greatest potential. Rogers' theory states that the person and environment are deeply connected. Human beings are energy fields, open systems that are continuously connected to the environment. Human beings are infinite with the universe and should not be viewed as parts, but rather as a whole. Rogers explained the environment as an irreducible pan-dimensional energy field identified by pattern and integral with the human field. There are many ways to apply Rogers' theory of unitary human beings, one of which is for nurses to use non-invasive modalities such as therapeutic touch, humor, music, meditation, and guided imagery to help patients move toward better health. An example of this is for chronic pain patients to use meditation to treat their pain 
or for an acute pain situation to listen to music or um, make jokes, use humor to distract them from the pain they're experiencing. Rogers' theory also relates to burnout as it promotes the well-being of nursing staff with the understanding that if the staff are not healthy, neither will their patients be. So this can apply to future um, manager decisions in terms of days off, resting, having proper staffing on the floor so that your staff does not become burnt out and they can properly treat their patients. In a clinical practice, um, the theory's greatest import areas of importance should be pain management, supportive therapy, and rehabilitation. Um, the theory also really promotes education and emphasis should be placed on the understanding of the patient and ways in which their environment affects their health. So Rogers really promotes engaging the patients in their care um, and having them understand and be knowledgeable on what is happening. And also the nurse should understand their environment when um, making care plans. So um, is the patient under a lot of stress, which is making it difficult for them to be healthy, or do they work in an industrial area which is affecting their health? There are many ways in which an individual's environment can affect their health. Um, generally, this theory begs us as nurses to take a more holistic approach to nursing, um, and that every patient interaction and nursing intervention should be holistic. This case study demonstrates how Rogers' unitary human beings theory can be applied to a real life situation. In this case study, Ms. Mrs. Agnes is admitted to the hospital due to chest pain and shortness of breath. Her residency level is very low because her sense of well-being is low. She requires pain medication, oxygen, and nursing care. She is experiencing integrality, continuous action between Mrs. Agnes and medical professionals. She goes through a CABG procedure. She receives wound care and her pain is under control. Mrs. Agnes's nurse provides her with thorough education on her medical condition and prescribed medications. Mrs. Agnes shares with her nurses she is grateful for having survived her heart attack and looks forward to her new life. She wants to quit smoking and become a healthier person. The nurse provides education on smoking cessation options and recommends meditation and guided imagery as coping mechanisms. Mrs. Agnes has received helical interventions and continues in a state of integrality with her environment. Um, in this example, she is using techniques that might help her stop smoking and is very involved during her care because she um, is educated throughout the process. Here are some additional resources to help you better understand Roger's theory of unitary human beings. Finally, here are the references that we used to make our presentation.